Um, as Juan was saying, I don't know if anyone heard this before. Um, we're looking at this session as more less a presentation. I do have some slides and I'm going to be talking about them, but this is going to be more um, interactive. It's going to be a lot more talking to talk, like hearing from you. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about ourselves um, just so you're clear on what our group is. Um, we would love to have you if this is if this group sounds like something you'd be interested in. Uh, absolutely, please join us. Um, we'll, again, we'll tell you more about it. Um, in the chat section, I've put my email address. So if you would like to be on the uh, mailing list, uh, please just email me and I'll be happy to add you. We also have a um, group page. Um, of, it's a Google Share Google Doc. That link is in the um, that link is in the chat. And finally, um, we do have monthly meetings. It's the third Wednesday of each month at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it's a Zoom meeting. Um, and if, if you'd like to join those, we're open to everybody, whether you're on the mailing list or not. Okay. So, oh, and um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please ask in chat. Uh, or if you feel if you feel comfortable, please. Feel free to you know, just speak up. So, so um, anyone have any questions before we get started? And oh, actually, before we get started, my, my name is Sally Evans. I'm the coordinator of University Dissertation and Thesis Services at George Mason University. Um, I'm also a USCTDA board member, and I'm going to be talking to you today. Well, I'm going to be showing you slides today about our formatting users. So, if anyone has any questions, let me know. One second. This is kind of weird. I'm getting used to hop in. This is the first time I've really used it. And I'm realizing, I don't know if I can see chats while I'm Whoa. doing a presentation. I don't know that I can. Okay. So can you all see my slides? Yeah. Good, good. Okay, good. Yeah, so I, I might be doing this wrong and there may be a better way to do it, but I unfortunately cannot see chats right now. So if someone knows how to do that, I'm just not noticing. So before we get into anything else, um, is there anybody out there who's having issues with issues in their job? If they're having specific challenges or problems, I would, we would love to hear from you. Uh, so whether that is about specifically formatting or processes, et cetera, uh, if you'd like to share in chat. Um, Stacy, if I could ask you to to look at either chat or Q&A because I can't see it because I have the slide up. Um, if anyone would like to share in chat or Q&A or absolutely please um, unmute and ask. We would love to hear from you because this is again not a presentation. This is a talk. <clears throat> Anybody? I'd like to say something. It's really not a problem for us, but it was mentioned in one of our um, meetings in the past week or so. I think Larry brought it up about um, so in the old world where we went from paper now to electronic everything had to be double spaced and now some people are saying you know that's outdated you should use single space and I actually did some research tried to do some research you know Google research is that what we all do to see if I could find any articles Subjects I really couldn't find much if I wanted to say here's the research that says it's really better to read in You know single space because that's what journals are doing whatever. I know we can Come out and say this is what others are doing But I think it'd be great if anybody knows where there's some really solid research to back up when we want to pre present changes to our schools or our universities or our or our rules our formatting rules yeah no that's that's great and that's 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 great Janice that is something we we have talked about in a limited capacity not in a limited capacity that's not the right way but we've talked about it in our group um, and it's something that we we've discussed a little bit obviously but I think really merits looking for, looking into it further from this point I think it would benefit all of us. So thank you. Anyone else? Any other issues you'd like to share, challenges, questions you're having right now? Uh, Sally, can you click on hide? There's a notice that says you're sharing your screen, but you can click on it where it says okay. hide. It's covering. Oh, you there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I clicked hide. 
There, now we can oh, see your captioning. Ah, there we go, jerks. Okay. So yeah. no, you're uh, not jerks. I'm, I'm angry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So anybody else? Any other, any challenges, questions, et cetera? Hi, th this is Terry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Terry. Hi. Um, following up on what Janice was uh, talking about, it's occurred to me because I've often looked like, should we be using serif instead of sans serif font, et cetera. And since I, I think the guidelines that I would follow um, would be for accessibility, right? And so the majority of, of folks are reading, you know, articles and ETDs online. And so yeah. what produces the most accessible um, and best reader experience, um, regardless of whether or not, you know, they're using a screen reader, just, just a simple act of reading online is really very different from print. And so um, that's what I would look at. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. You have a point out on the chat too as well. Accessibility is, you know, consideration. You're kind of breaking up, Stacy. Yeah, it's <coughs> there. Yeah, there have been some weird little crackly moments today. Okay, so if anyone, else, if no one else has anything that they'd like to share, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about our group, and then we can open it up for further discussion or questions. Um, so. I don't know about you, but I know that a lot of the people who are in the group now and a lot of people we speak to at our conference are kind of in the same boat that I'm in. Um, often we wear a whole lot of different hats. So at your job, do you ever feel that if no one at your institution gets you, you're either surrounded by a bunch of librarians who are talking about metadata or access services or cataloging and you say, oh, you know, I had to meet with a student today because they just can't get the table of contents and they just stare at you. So, and you may even know what they're talking about, but they have no, idea. you may know what they're talking about, but they have no idea what you're talking about. Do you have problems or issues in your position that nobody around you seems to understand or care about? You have daily issues, you need help, but your people have no idea what you're talking about or they just don't care. And finally, you despair of ever fixing your LaTeX template? Yes, I do. So if you're suffering from any of these issues or anything similar, the USETDA Formatting Users Group is here to help. So Sally, there, yes. there is something in the Q&A. Okay, great. If you wouldn't mind reading it to me. Happy to. Um, it's from Roxanne. We are currently dealing with an issue of whether to have separate formatting requirements for monograph and multi-paper format theses and dissertations. Oh, that's that's and a really have experience with this issue. That's a great question. I'm um, anybody want to share? Uh, I can share a little bit. We, we allow, you know, multi-paper formats and our, our requirements are pretty um, low, except every time there is a, a new paper in this, you know, multi-paper document that has to have uh, a statement that they have the, they have the permission to use this as part of their document because sometimes these articles are previously published in a journal somewhere. So we have some minimum formatting and then they still have to follow whatever style guide is um, recommended by their department and their college. But we have some, just a little bit of a standard that they have to have a statement that they have permission to use this. And this is at Brigham Young University. You have to be careful when you're using published journal articles, for example, because many of the journals will very carefully state that you must use a submitted version. You cannot keep the copy and paste directly from journal information because that's their 
value product. In other words, that's what they really, when they have a copyright, that's what they're interested in preserving. That's their format. And they don't want you using their format. And so you can get in big trouble if you copy and paste directly from a journal. So I warn students about that all the time. Uh, you can use your last submitted version that you submitted to the journal that was accepted, but you cannot take it directly from the journal, either the, the graphics or the tables or the text. I've personally had the inverse of what Larry, inverse of what Larry's talking about. I've, uh, where students, uh, where students have documents, I mean, that they, once they've published them, if they've already been published, they're not white papers or under consideration, um, that they're already published. And let's say the publication that the document is in is their format, the format is, is dual com dual column, dual column single spaced space pink text. text. Um, and the, and the and journal or whatever says, this is exactly what it always has to look like, period. Um, students will want to, in, you know, ever, you can reprint it, but this is what it has to look like every time you reprint it. Um, so the, uh, what I tell students, and I don't know if anyone else has this issue, is anything that you put in the body has to adhere to our formatting guidelines. Anything in the body of your, of your dissertation or thesis from chapter, from the first word of chapter one to the last word of, you know, the conclusion or whatever has to adhere to our rules. Um, you can, if you have a document that you want to include, but it has to stay in the formatting of that, of the journal or source, that's fine. You can, you can include it, but it has to be an appendix. It, it cannot be a chapter. If they will not let you, if they will not let you just use the original text and reproduce it as a chapter, then absolutely you can include it, but it's not, it's not going to be considered a chapter. You know, I started thinking about inclusion of uh, previously published information and even information that hasn't been published, but there's been, and been what I'm seeing in, in student work now is that when they provide an ETD, each chapter will be almost a standalone mm -hmm. publication in some journal once they're finished. Yeah, that's, I think and that might the, be, oh, sorry. The only thing I tell them is you can't put the abstract in there because we only allow one abstract in the manuscript. So um, they can't do that. So we say, you've got to take the, you've got to take the abstract out and you've got to tie everything together. I started thinking about that earlier today during one of the meetings, and I'm just wondering if we either should require this to be put in an appendix rather than as a chapter within the, the main body of the manuscript itself, or maybe a supplemental data, especially if it's previously published. And then they refer to it directly in their manuscript relative to whatever happens to be in there that they need, whether it's a graph or uh, table, no matter what it is, they could refer to it directly and it would sure save a lot of hassle in the main body of the manuscript in terms of placing figures and tables, which is a real bugaboo for a lot of students, no matter what they use, whether it's Word or LaTeX or no matter what it is. It's easier in LaTeX, but in, oh, yeah. in Word, it, it can really be a mess. Yeah, so I switched out the slides so I can actually see people, but no, uh, I, I think and it's anyone else, any other experience that they're having with either formatting document, Terry, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to ask who is actually uh, creating the uh, guidelines or rules or policy yeah. on the inclusion of manuscript chapters? Um, you know, at, at uh, University of Toledo, um, it's the graduate council and the executive graduate council mm -hmm. that determines everything from the format to, you know, what is able to be included. And um, a, lot, a lot of that is actually, it reverts back to that particular college or department or faculty member, you know, to make the determination of whether or not, you know, they can include the manuscript chapter. But, well, we, have, yeah. we have an ETD advisory committee and that committee since we're made up of five faculty members and five students are voting members and they're advisory to me as the director of the etd program and so we take issues that we develop within the the advisory committee and if the vote in the advisory committee is positive 
we take that information to the Graduate Studies Council. And then the Graduate, Graduate Studies Council either approves or disapproves. I've, I've yet to have them disapprove anything that the council, that the advisory committee would approve. So that seems to work, work very well for us. And it gets students involved in the ETD process early because they're really involved with, and I'm having students scramble to try to get onto that committee right now. I've got a waiting list for students to get on the committee. So it's working very well in that respect. Thank you. And I just wanted to add that I pasted in in the chat um, our guide for theses and dissertations. And on page 24 is where you find out um, information about compiling articles as a dissertation. And, um, and it's similar at UF as well. Um, we go to the Graduate Council if we need to make changes. Right. And for us, for the purposes of just my job and for what my job encompasses, I've, I tell students all the time, your document can say, your actual document can say literally blah, blah, blah for 200 pages if that's what you want. If your committee approves blah, blah, blah for 200 pages, that's fine. It just has to be formatted correctly. Um, so for me, you know, what, what is actually in the document itself? So Larry was saying that... Um, the, it can be in like three completely discrete documents that, you know, aren't chapters and may sort of incidentally re like refer to one another or not refer to one another, but refer to topics that the others are discussing, but they're completely separate manuscripts. It's, it's not a, it's not a traditional dissertation or thesis the way we've seen it for a long time. Um, and, so, you know, I tell our students, I'm, we actually allow them to, if they have, you know, for each individual chapter, a chapter, they can have an appendix for each chapter. Um, they have to have an overarching appendix for the whole thing that says, you know, in this dissertation, I will discuss blah, 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 whatever. But um, for each, you know, for each chapter, they're allowed to include the chapter for, I mean, I'm sorry, for each individual chapter slash manuscript, they're allowed to use the abstract for that. But that's just us. I think we also allow that, in fact, if there's you know more than one article, each article could be about a, a different topic, and yeah. an abstract is helpful in yeah. telling you what what you're going to learn there. And we've taught our students to if you're going to have more than one abstract in the bookmarks, you can't just use the word abstract. You have to say you know abstract one, or you yeah. you relabel it so it's helpful to the user who's going to be reading it online. Yeah. I find that really surprising. We're like Larry, where um, we even require them to tie those articles together. So they have to have kind of an overarching theme of so what pulls them into one study and what makes them one bound body of work. Mm -hmm. So, it, and, and this is a prime example of what we kind of do in this group. I mean, yeah. this is this is what we do every mm -hmm. month. And, um, you know, it's great. It's great to find out mm -hmm. how different we all do things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to quickly share. So that's that's a good point. I'm just going to bring this one slide up really fast. I unhid because I was kind of not making any sense. Okay, so share one second. Okay, so I'm going to share this for a second. So hopefully you can see my slide now. It says, who are we? Um, and like Stacey was saying, this is what we do. Let me get rid of this. Um, this is what we do. Um, the And I can give a little bit more history later, but... Um, we are at our monthly meetings, which are, are set for an hour, but that's a that's a very fluid setting. Um, sometimes it takes us 30 minutes to get done. Sometimes, I mean, we've had meetings that have gone on for an hour and a half. So it's, you know, but you're, of course, welcome to drop out whenever you would like to. Uh, we understand people have lives way beyond this. Um, so yeah, it's usually they're about 45 minutes long. That's pretty normal. But we just get together, discuss issues we're having. Um, people throw out questions just like Roxanne did. Um, with, you know, I'm, I'm having trouble with this. Can anybody help me with that? Sometimes it's an issue that is, you know, that is almost a one-off in which you discuss that just that day, or it becomes something that you, and this has happened with me personally, it becomes something that you look into later, or it becomes a presentation. Um, so, like I said, we meet every month. I put the Zoom link and the information in the chat. Um, we have had um, 
colleagues from various schools who are members of the group uh, who have come and you know, given presentations about their processes, talked about issues they're having. Um, when ProQuest was uh, bought out by Clarivate, we had Austin McLean and Jillian Smith from uh, from ProQuest come and speak to us and you know tell us more about the about the situation and take questions and answers and that was very helpful for us and hopefully for them too. Um, so that's what we do. Um, <clears throat> these are like recent discussions, presentations we've had uh, about accessibility and we are, that's a big question that has come up and we're going to address that more in the future. Uh, format standardization, which that's sort of what we're talking about now and also modernizing formatting rules. And that's what we were talking about earlier, you know, with, with the Janus brought up with single space versus double space, um, digital ETDs. That is the most unclear thing I've ever typed in my life. Um, it, it means um, like born digital dissertations that are almost entirely online. Um, so that it's like the dissertation itself is not the item, the online material is the item. Um, so this is, it's been very helpful for me at least. I can, I can speak for myself and anyone else please jump in. Um, I've gotten help with a, like a word issue that I was having. I could not fix this problem with the table of contents and a colleague was able to help me fix this bizarre problem. Um, I am, I've spoken with, I have I just had a meeting and we'll be having meetings uh, about a ProQuest issue. It's not a, it's not a ProQuest issue. It's, it's, it's an issue that my, my school is having with a crosswalking problem, but I was able to find people who could help me when I couldn't find anybody who could help me at my own university. So that's why we're here. Um, um, this, we're going to go back to the discussion in a second, but our Google Doc, the link is in the, is in the chat. If you would like to join the mailing list, again, please email me. My email address is in the chat. Um, we welcome anybody and everybody. I think we have about, gosh, 40 or 50 people in the group. If you have a colleague that is not part of USCTDA that would benefit from this, first, see if you can get them to, you know, come to USCTDA. It's a lot more helpful than people outside of our field think it is. Um, also, if you think that they would be interested, not so much directly in ETDs, but in the con conversations we have, especially about like scholarly commons or technical issues with Word, um, absolutely. Uh, if they would like to join and be on the mailing list, if they'd like to um, attend, please pass our info on. I'm going to unshare this. Okay, one moment. I also think it's a good place if you've got something that's a really good practice. This is a good group to share this with. Mm -hmm. I know when our university went from optional ETD to requiring ETD, I sat down with my colleague and we just looked at a bunch of different universities, how they formatted and we just made up our rules as far as what was on the title page. And we learned a lot from everybody who was already out there, you know, a few years yeah. ahead of us. And if you guys have great things you do for, you know, teaching or training, you know, share them with the rest of us so that we can copy your content, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So we Absolutely. Do. <laughs> I need, I don't know if um, Ashley Messersmith is here today, but um, I need to talk to her about um, Overleaf stuff. But Ashley, if you're here, I'm going to be emailing you next sometime next week. Um, yeah, Janice is completely right. Um, this is, if you're, especially if you're either a school that is not electronic, but hope to be there, or as we were when I first joined USCDA, um, if you're partially electronic, then, and you want to make the whole jump, this would be a good place for you. And or any, so if you know anyone, any colleagues at other schools that either are not electronic at all or are trying to get there or are partially there, this is a good place to go so they can see, you know, either A, see how great someone did it, uh, B, use them as a, um, as a teaching tool, what not to do. Um, Sally, there's a comment in the chat that it okay. actually asked, do you have a recording of that merger talk with Austin and Jillian? I do. Is sorry. that in the Google Doc? It's in the Google Doc. Oh, hey, Ashley. Oh, sorry. For some reason, that's yeah, um, here. G GW, I, I do. Um, and you can, if you go to our uh, Google page, the shared group doc, if you go to the shared group doc, um, the chat with Austin is there. I, I'm going to have to look and see. I believe I might, may have 
specifically named it as that, but if not, I'm going to go, I can go check in a second. So yes, I do have that. And just one last yeah, thing. Yeah. I Oh, yes, John, if you John, if you could please uh, pro post the ProQuest video, please do. That would be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say that this group is very much a believers and open access sharing, too. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have found has been, like Janice said, go ahead and steal our, our text. Go ahead and use our templates. Um, I think we've always shared um, amongst this group and that's that really helps all our institutions raise mm -hmm. higher learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's helpful for a lot of people, especially if you're at a public institution that doesn't have any money, it's, it's really helpful to get free things shared from colleagues who are there to help. Um, any other questions? We especially want to hear from anybody who is who has not been to our session, um, especially if you're having issues, if there is something you'd like to talk about. Of course, you're welcome to come to our upcoming sessions. Exactly. Exactly. It's not still in someone's way. Yeah. Um, Larry sort of share the details on how he's using Overleaf. I mean, I see it used to it every year at the, oh. at the session. Oh, one second, Janice, you're kind of breaking up. Janice, if you would use the Q and A and and type in your yeah, statement. Just type it in because okay, event. I see event something. Oops. Okay, sorry, I made the wrong thing. I went to the wrong thing. Anyway, so yes, um, chat. Let's see. Sorry, I was I'm catching up on the chat and I clicked into the wrong thing, um, but. We found it really, really valuable. Um, I'm probably in the next couple of months. I ask a question both on the ETD listserv and I'll, and within our group about um, an issue I was having about on campus access. And so, I mean, sometimes all you sometimes you need true help. You don't know where to where you don't know where to go. Other times you need a sounding board. You need to find out is what I want to do or what I'm thinking normal and if in asking people to do this am i asking am i being ridiculous or if i don't ask people to do this is that ridiculous in a different way so sometimes it's just good to as i you know started with what was said in the one slide it's nice to have people who understand what you're talking about i actually have a question um sure. is anybody thinking or contemplating if you have templates about changing your templates so they meet accessibility requirements? That's a great question, Valerie. And I, I think that's any, any, anything anyone has to, to say today, great. That's something that I think we should definitely tackle, if not in the next session, then in a future one. Is anyone, is any, and is anyone beyond, beyond thinking about it, which I think we all either are or should be, is anyone taking any, has anyone taken any steps toward it yet? And if so, that we would love to hear from you and we would love for you to come and tell us about it. Yep, cool. So looks like um, Monica and Lily are thinking about it. Uh, GW has planning it for our next ETD committee meeting. Yep. Oh, Erica, great. Okay. Oh, we have a question in the chat. Um, for schools that are using Word templates to facilitate submission, what has been the greatest challenge for students to properly use the template? Are there certain Word template areas, such as preliminary pages, Word, main body text, biblio, that you that, that they consistently run off course and need to be redirected? Good Lord, yes. I mean, yes. Um, hey, Sally, can I interrupt real quick? Absolutely. Um, Stacy, I need to borrow you at what, 525. I'm going to hop over to the stage for the poster presentation, but if you can hang out here for a little bit longer, but um, we need you to moderate. Uh, and I sent you a direct message if you're not sure. So, okay, thanks. Bye. Go ahead, Sally. Yes, I saw you. I saw your message. Thanks. Uh, but that's, that's a great question, Ron. Um, and does it, would anyone like to speak to that? For, again, for schools that are using Word templates to facilitate submission, what has been the, oh, okay, great. What has been the greatest challenge for students to properly use the template? Um, for run in my experience, and this is this, and this, this is actually one of those perfect example of what we do. Um, 
the issue that I often see, we have a biography at the end of our at the end of our theses and dissertations. It's students are welcome to say whatever they like, uh, but but it's a required page, um, and that's the most common thing that gets deleted. And I I don't um, I need to make this much more clear and our directions clear apparently clearly I do because. Um, like students who are in the English department, and I say this as, an, as a former English student, freak out because they don't have anything to put in the list of equations, but then delete the biography without even thinking twice about it. They don't even ask, should I have this? Do I need to have this? Meanwhile, they're like, should I just put an E equals MC squared? No, but put your biography back in and say something. Um, so that's, that's the big issue we have. Um, pagination also is an issue, but it's, that's mostly just not following directions. And I see there's a question in Q and A. If anyone else has any like input about like word, yeah, Larry is going to talk about overleaf. Cool. All right, All right. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely want to hear about overleaf chat. Oh, thank you, Ron. Um, any other questions? Oh, oh. thanks, Stacy. Oh, and um, we're we have about eight minutes left. I was going to share this with folks one second let me get back into here um feel free to if anyone has anything they'd like to ask about any questions they'd like to raise i'm just pulling something up real fast you're breaking up real bad janice That's a really good point. Uh, GW says Word is a lot less power user friendly than it was last century. Oh, that's a Janice. That's great. My response to questions about signature pages is why have them in the document at all? Oh, I agree. I think they're archaic and ridiculous. I, I think they're I think they're ritual for this for ritual's sake, and I like ritual as much as the next person. But if if I can click a button online that says, yes, I'll pay you hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a house, surely I can say, yes, your dissertation is okay. We, we, don't, don't, use them yeah. we don't use them at GW anymore. Yeah, they're just, well, I'm, uh, at Mason, I'm, I'm, this has been going on for a few years and COVID kind of got in the way of it, but we're trying to move away from using signature sheets at all. We're trying to fully automate. That's way far down the road, but yeah, I, well, oh, and actually, uh, GW says we're considering removing them from all of our digitized dissertations. Um, we actually don't, like these signed signature sheets, we don't share them online. I mean, in the past, there are some older ones that in the past, like they all were, but then every now and then one ends up there. That's a long story that I won't bore you with, but yeah. So Sally, Sally, what we did was we replaced that signed signature sheet with what we call a certification page. And it just says that uh, the the school certifies blah blah blah, and then they just list the committee members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we do is we actually generate a Google form, and all of the committee members and the mentor uh, go into the Google form, and it's password protected, so they're the only ones that can get into it. Oh, that's great. And they provide yeah. their approval, and we just copy that approval, and it goes directly into a Google document. Yeah. And we put the Google document, it goes into the file. Yeah. So that's, I, with our school, and this is just a quick anecdotal thing. Um, our school is very new. George Mason has been around since about the 50s or 60s. It's very, very new. And uh, right now, and I don't know if anyone else has this, I would love to hear from them. Um, but on on signatures and sheets, depending on the college and school in, within Mason, they have signatures for the program director and or department chairperson and or dean. So they have like the, the dean, at least one dean has to sign every signature sheet that comes through like per their college. Um, and I understand why it was that way in the beginning because it was a very small school. And oh yes, definitely, Ashley, it's important work for 
um, physical signature requirements. I want to get rid of them all together, but I won't put them online. Um, so, but yes, and we should definitely list committee member names. Absolutely, Roxanne, Lily, I see also signatures in the ETD. Correct. Great. That's excellent. But with us, um, I think people started doing it in the beginning because it was, you know, this nice idea of having a communal experience and the deans are, you know, very involved in your work and in your study. And that's that's great when the school had like 6,000 people, but we're now the largest public school in the state of Virginia. We're, we're bigger than Virginia Tech and UVA. Um, so not together, but that'd be huge. That'd be like Ohio University, Ohio or Ohio State. But we, um, yeah, like we're a big school and it just doesn't make any sense that the Dean of the College of Science has to sign like 50 signature sheets for, especially for theses and dissertations he's never, or she's never gonna see beyond just like maybe, maybe reading the title. So I, I, I want to get rid of them all together. Maybe that's, maybe that can be our like vive la revolution within our group, get rid of signature sheets. That's, that's a really tough one. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 um, and I don't know why everything is electronic now. You just click on it. Yeah. But, but again, I think it's ritual for ritual's sake. Sure. Yeah. 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 And it, I mean, it's in some ways, I know it's, it's a nice idea, but I, I, I just, I, I mean, again, like others are saying, um, removing physical signature requirements due to fraud issues, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, I, I would love to get rid of them. I would be thrilled if they went, if I could make that decision on my own, at least for Mason, they would have been gone in 2012, the, like the first year after I started because they're ridiculous. And I, I mean that for everybody, it's not just ours. But approve it, yes, sign it, who cares? So. Any, these are great. Any other questions, comments, etc. Are are yeah. any Jenna says our online system allows for approvals within the system, and the Department of College and the and the Department and College approvers have to be authenticated by login. Yes, exactly. I mean, you have to be authenticated somehow. To, I mean, to do anything to look at stuff, to look at specific materials within the library system, to you know, submit your timesheet, whatever. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a really great point. I don't know why this is so hard. I don't know why it's so hard to just say yes, why you can do all of that other, but you can't click a button that says I approve. Yes, yes, no more papers or chasing signatures. Allison, do you have a question? Just a comment. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, and sometimes it's, it's at least in my institution, because we're just kind of getting off the ground with um, and with an IR, um, sometimes it's it's difficult to convince the departments to go away from the old way. <laughs> They're so used to doing things that it's it's kind of hard to convince them to um, go completely electronic or still continue to submit bound mm -hmm. um, versions of their of their work. So. What we, uh, and okay, I'm sorry, I just realized um, we have about one minute left, but I'm going to put this in. This is, I'm putting in a, um, if anyone wants to keep talking about this, I would be more than happy to. Um, I am putting in a Zoom link to the absolutely, totally unofficial, unofficial USCGDA um, non-related uh, happy hour chat about what we've been talking about. If anyone has any further questions that they would like to discuss. Uh, if you have um, issues that we're not that we're not um, discussed here, please absolutely join our Zoom meeting. The link is in the chat, so I'm starting that now. So if anyone has, wants to keep talking about this, come on over. If not, have a great rest of the day. So uh, last minute, thank you all for being here today. We hope to see you in further meetings. Again, if you want to join our, if you want to join the um, group list, please just send, please just email me, ask me to add you and I will be happy to. And thank you to all of our, what I call the founding members of the USCTDA um, formatting users group. Thank you to our always active members who are there. And thank you to Larry, Janice and Valerie for being here on the panel as well today. And thank you to everyone for your excellent questions.
Hi, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Have to a good see rest you of all. Bye.